Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Ethereum has just confirmed a significant breakout while Bitcoin is running into important resistance. And on top of that, in less than 24 hours from now, new CPI inflation numbers will be released, which can heavily affect market prices. All of that and more in this video, so definitely stick around. First of all, talking about the new US CPI inflation numbers that will be released in less than 24 hours from now. In fact, they will be released at exactly 1.30 p.m. GMT time on the 12th of January. But if you don't want to memorize that time and come and check for yourself, you can simply follow me on Twitter with notifications turned on because as soon as the new numbers get released, I'll be sure to tweet them out over on my Twitter, which by the way, there's a link to my Twitter in the description down below below and also in the pinned comment. But basically all you need to know is the expectations, so what the market is expecting these numbers to be at, and essentially if the number comes in under expectations, so lower than expectations, that's bullish for markets, but if the number comes in higher than expectations, that is bearish for markets. And right now, based on consensus, the majority is expecting the new inflation numbers to come in at 6.5% year over year in inflation in the US, which would be dropping down from 7.1% year over year, which is where it's currently sitting at at the time of recording this video. But based on the trading economics forecast, this is expecting a drop down to 6.7% year over year. So basically, if inflation comes in at around 6.5% to 6.7%, that should be relatively neutral for markets because that's pretty much what everyone is expecting. But like I said, if the number comes in below 6.5%, that will actually be bullish for markets. And then on the flip side, if the number comes in higher than around 6.7%, that would actually be bearish for markets. And the reason why lower is bullish and higher is bearish is all to do with the Federal Reserve essentially fighting inflation by raising interest rates. Because as most of you probably already know by now, the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates to try and lower inflation. And so if inflation comes in a lot higher than expected, that suggests that the Federal Reserve will have to actually raise interest rates higher than what the market is expecting. And in case you didn't already know, higher interest rates slow down the economy and are essentially bearish for markets. But then on the flip side, if inflation comes in a lot lower than what everyone is expecting, that essentially means the Federal Reserve is already doing a lot of work with bringing down inflation. And perhaps in that case, rates might not go as high as what the market is already expecting, which once again would be bullish because if rates don't go as high as what markets are already pricing in, then that means markets have already priced in too much pain and potentially have to start reaccumulating some of the assets that they may have sold. And in case you're wondering, the futures market has currently priced in for the federal funds rate, so essentially interest rates by the Federal Reserve to go up to around 5% in the March Fed meeting. And by the way, the next Fed meeting is on the 1st of Feb. And as of right now, the majority is expecting a 25 basis point hike. So basically raising interest rates by a quarter of a percent at the next Fed meeting in February. And then in the March Fed meeting, the majority is expecting another 25 basis point hike on top of the 25 basis point hike in the February Fed meeting. And so basically, according to what the futures market has already priced in, according to what everyone is already expecting, the federal funds rate will likely go up another half a percent over the next few months from where it is right now at around 4.5% up to 5% and then stay there for a good chunk of this year. And then what's interesting is the market is actually expecting the federal funds rate to begin going down again later this year, later in 2023, as in around the September, November or December Fed meetings. So basically, depending on what inflation comes in, at, this can heavily affect what the futures market is currently pricing in. And if the futures market starts to price in for rates to go a lot higher than what they're currently expecting, or for interest rates to stay higher for longer than what they're currently expecting, then any of those scenarios would be bearish for markets if inflation comes in hotter than expected. But like I said, if inflation comes in underneath expectations, then this will mean these probabilities will likely shift more to the downside 
downsides, whether that means interest rates don't go as high as what we're expecting, or perhaps they don't stay that high for very long, and we might see cuts sooner than expected. Because remember, the Federal Reserve targets an average inflation rate at 2%. And so if the new CPI inflation numbers do come in at around 6.5%, obviously that has already been a significant drop from 9.1%, which is the peak. And simply based on this trend going from 9.1% to perhaps around 6.5% with the new inflation numbers coming soon, considering the fact that that drop in inflation happened over around half a year, this trend suggests that CPI inflation will likely return to somewhat normal levels around 2%, perhaps towards the end of 2023 based on the current trends. But anyway, all you really need to know is if the number comes in below 6.5%, that is likely going to be bullish for markets. If it comes in at around 6.5% to 6.7%, it shouldn't really affect markets all that much. But if it comes in above 6.7%, then that should be bearish for markets. And once again, as soon as the new number gets released, I'll be sure to tweet it out over on my Twitter, link down below in the description and in the pinned comment. But anyway, now getting into the Bitcoin part of this video, this right here is the weekly Bitcoin chart. Just quickly reminding you that this massive bullish divergence is still currently in play, obviously, as I've been talking about over the last one to two months. And so this simply means that we're seeing a massive pause from the larger bearish trend. Basically, the bear market right now is on pause while this massive bullish divergence is playing out. And it's likely that this bullish divergence will continue to play out over at least the coming weeks, if not the coming one to two months. But anyway, if you're looking at the shorter term, this right here is the four hour Bitcoin chart. And obviously over the last one day, we've seen a massive breakout, especially more recently over the last few hours. And basically the moment the price of Bitcoin confirmed a break above this important golden pocket at around 17.5K approximately, we saw an immediate spike to the upside because above the golden pocket, there's not as much resistance. Obviously, there was technically some resistance at around 17.9K, which didn't last very long. And as of right now, we're currently running into a bit of resistance at around 18.3K to 18.4K based on this previous local high. And now, obviously, in terms of the price trend itself, we are clearly still in a short-term bullish trend ever since I've been saying since this point right down here. But with that being said, if you're looking at the four hour Bitcoin price oscillators, first of all, looking at the four hour Bitcoin MACD, we're finally starting to see more and more bullish momentum build up for this short term bullish trend. But unfortunately, that means that the four hour Bitcoin RSI is well into overbought territories right now, which technically means at least in the short term, the price is very overheated. We've essentially gone too far to the upside too fast. And we do actually need some time to cool off this RSI, basically reset the RSI to potentially give us some more room to the upside later on. Because otherwise, if we don't see any short-term cool off sometime soon, and instead the price just keeps pumping like what it has been doing over the last few hours, then we could end up with a situation like this, where we fail to see short-term cool-offs. We just go straight to the upside, and then we see a much larger correction, because obviously a trend going straight to the upside without any pullbacks is unsustainable. So we actually need to see some cool offs along the way in order to sustain the bullish trend. And now if you zoom out to the daily Bitcoin chart, right now the price of Bitcoin is running into this important range of resistance, which is coming into play in between around 18.1K going up towards around 18.7K. And this range of resistance is heavily based on this previous range of support in between around June and November last year. Because technically speaking, if the price confirms a break below important support, that now flips into new resistance, as we have actually seen one time during around the middle of December. We have already seen one rejection from this range of resistance, confirming that it is currently acting as resistance. And so this combines with the fact that the daily Bitcoin RSI is entering into overbought territories right now, are just signed to be somewhat cautious, despite the short-term bullish trend still remaining intact. So like I said, we're still more bullish than bearish in the immediate short term because we haven't actually
actually confirmed another rejection or bearish reversal in the shorter term, but we do have some potential warning signs to pay attention to. So I would remain somewhat cautious, especially while the price is below this resistance, but I would flip a lot more bullish on the daily timeframe if we begin to see a confirmed break above around 18.7K. Because if you also bring out the larger Fibonacci retracement tool from swing high to swing low on the daily timeframe, we have the 38.2% Fibonacci level of resistance sitting at around 18.6 to 18.7K. But if the Bitcoin price confirms a break above 18.7K, then our next resistance level is the 50% retracement level sitting at around 19.7K. And above that, we have the golden pocket range of resistance coming into play in between around 20.9K to 21.2K. So basically around $21,000 per Bitcoin. And now keep in mind the golden pocket is the most important Fibonacci level with the 38.2% Fibonacci level as the second most important level in the Fibonacci retracement tool. And so technically speaking, the 50% retracement level isn't as important as these other levels, which means there's actually a high probability that the Bitcoin price could continue up towards around $21,000 per Bitcoin if we see a confirmed break up above 18.7k. Obviously, that needs to happen first, but if we do see that happen with confirmation on the daily time frame, then I would actually expect for the price to likely head up towards around 21,000. But until we actually see a break above 18.7k, just be somewhat cautious while we're still below this resistance. But anyway, now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the daily ETH to US dollar chart. And over the last one day, we have officially seen a confirmed break above this horizontal resistance, which was sitting at around 1350. And so far, we've already seen one daily candle close above 1350, which is technically confirming the breakout once again. And now if you wanted to see more confirmation, you could wait for more candle closes or a possible retest of 1350 to flip that into new support again. But that will just add extra confirmation on top of what is already a confirmed breakout, technically speaking. And so based on this breakout and based on the fact that we've broken out from an ascending triangle pattern, we do have a technical price target sitting at just underneath 1.7K. And this technical price target is sitting extremely close to this previous high, which is sitting at around 1650 to 1.7K approximately. So as of right now, this price range in between 1650 to 1.7K is technically an active price target on the chart. But it is important to understand that even though this is an active price target on the chart, there are, of course, other levels of resistance between now and then. For example, if you bring out the Fibonacci retracement tool from swing high to swing low, as of right now, at the time of recording this video, the price of ETH is actually running into the golden pocket range of resistance, which is coming into play in between around 14.10 up to around 14.30. So in the immediate short term, this this is the important resistance that I'm paying attention to. But if we see a confirmed break above 1430, then our next resistance won't be until up towards around 1520. But then if we see a break above 1520, then I'll expect the price to continue up towards this price target range. And now just keep in mind, even though we have an active bullish price target and the trend in the shorter term is technically still a bullish trend, we do have a couple of signs to be somewhat cautious at least in the shorter term, for example, the price running into the golden pocket and also the daily Ethereum RSI entering into overbought territories. And if you're looking at the last couple of times this has happened, that was just after a significant pump in the price of ETH, but close to a local top just before we actually pulled back. And now obviously during that dump was when the whole FTX situation happened. So because we don't have that exact same situation right now, it's not like we're going to see the exact exact same price action because obviously a lot of that price action was based on the FTX situation. But with that being said, with the daily RSI overbought and the price running into resistance, we still need to remain somewhat cautious, at least in the shorter term. But whether the price continues going to the upside or if we turn around to the downside or simply chop around sideways, either way, you can make money in crypto by watching these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left is a complete step-by-step -step tutorial 
tutorial showing you how to trade crypto from start to finish. And the video in the bottom left shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is chopping around it sideways. But that's just about everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.